Benito Mussolini's rise to power in the early 1920s in Italy is a fairly rapid and, from a historical pr perspective, fairly surprising one. And to give some context, as late as 1915, 1915, he had recently been ousted from the Italian Socialist Party based on his dissent over whether Italy should enter the war. The socialist, the official stance of the party is that the war, World War I, is an imperialist war, that Italy had no business entering it, that Italy should stay neutral. But you had more nationalist elements in the party, and Mussolini was one of them, says, no, this is Italy's chance for glory. This is Italy's chance to build its empire. And so in 1915, he's ousted from the Socialist Party, and he decides to start his own group called the, the Fasci d'Azioni Revolutionaria. And I talk about that in the video on fascism, but it was often referred to as the Milan Fascio. The Milan Fascio, which was a group that was strongly nationalist, that was pro-entering the war. And Italy does eventually enter the war, not necessarily because of these guys. This was still a fairly insignificant, a fairly insignificant organization. The reason why I'm mentioning is it shows Mussolini, even before the war, was showing these very strong nationalistic tendencies and this tendency to, to start organizations that, that were pro-nationalist, pro and he tended to call them fasci. And he gets this, this notion of fasci. The term had been used well before Mussolini for a kind of league of revolutionaries, league of, 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 of people who are looking to take, to take action on something. But then he enters into the war as, as a soldier. And then exiting, in, in exiting the war in 1919, he decides to, to reorganize or, or to, to start leading a, a, a group again. And this time, he calls it the Fasci di Combattimento. Fasci di Combattimento. Battimento. Which could literally be translated as the League of Combatants. And this isn't even a, a formal party at this point of time. It's really a collection of a, of a couple of hundred people. The estimates I've seen is about 200 200 individuals who group together and, and what unifies them is a strongly anti-socialist ideology. And there's an irony here because Mussolini was in the Socialist Party before the war, but it's a strongly anti-socialist ideology and a strongly nationalist, nationalist ideology. And to understand where this strong anti-socialist or anti-Bolshevik ideology uh, came from, you have to understand the context of Italy and Europe at that time. You have to remember that you have the, the Russian Empire fell during World War I. It was now run by the communists. You have a fear that that is going to spread throughout Europe. The, the, you have a, a, the leading party in Italy at the time is the Italian Socialist Party. You have a left-leading government. And so th there is a, a desire to react against that, that seeming spread of, of socialism or of, of communism. And these guys don't view it as just, hey, let's just meet together and talk about it and maybe try to run for elections. They want to actively coerce people. They want to actively intimidate people. And these groups that would, would rise out of this, that would be strongly anti-socialist and, and anti, the, the anti-left-leaning government, they would wear these black shirts and they were often called the black shirts, which I won't wear it right in black because then you wouldn't see it. So I'll write in this blue color. These black shirts. And these were very loosely organized bands. They were often called, you know, fasci. That would, it would often be young men who would kind of gather together in towns throughout Italy and say, you know, we, we, we believe in this anti-socialist ideology. Uh, we want to take up arms and intimidate socialists, intimidate people on the left. And so you have these black shirts, this, this paramilitary group starting to arise. But in 1919, I want to emphasize, very small, very, very small, very, very insignificant. But their influence grows. You have more and more of these fasci forming throughout Europe. This is very, or not through Europe, throughout Italy. This is very appealing to, to many, especially young boys in Italy. Mussolini himself is a very inspiring orator. He's kind of this, this, this you know, larger than life personality. He's, he's, he, he, sometimes what he says doesn't, didn't necessarily make complete logical sense, but it, may, it really appealed to people's emotions that he was a strong leader, that someone that they would actually want to follow. And so in two short years, you forward to 1921, 
1921, this fasci di combattimento had now morphed into a real national party. It's now, and they renamed themselves the nationalist, the nationalist, or the national fascist party. Fascist party. And obviously it wasn't called that in Italian. In Italian, it was the Partito Nazionale Fascista. And Mussolini is, is, is the leading figure here. He gets elected to the deputy, the Chamber of Deputies. Chamber of Deputies, along with several other fascists. But they're still a fairly small party, although they've already now, they're gaining steam, they're becoming mainstream. And, but even though they're becoming more mainstream, they still haven't given up their, their use of force and their use of intimidation. And then we forward to 1922, and all of this is happening quite rapidly. But by 1922, Italy is not in a good situation. People aren't happy with the left-leaning government. They feel that it's weak, that it's not able to turn the economy around, that it's not able to bring order, that the, the extreme left is having too much power, that there, there, there are too many strikes, that the, the country isn't being run properly. The middle class and the, and the, the elite aren't happy with this. And so the, the fascists are getting many, more and more and more followers, one, kind of, you could say, civilian followers, but they're also getting more and more fasci that are forming. And they're showing that their, their use of, of violence actually can sometimes get goals that, that the weak, weaker government couldn't get. They were able to break strikes in 1922 uh, with the perception that that was helping to bring order. And so by October of 1922... By October of 1922, you have Mussolini at this head. He has this conference of 40,000 fascists. And they, they essentially come, come to the idea that they need to march on Rome to, to bring order to, to Italy, that they should demand, they should demand uh, a, a, a stronger government. So in October, you have a march on Rome. And I've seen several accounts of the size of this map march on Rome. But the, the numbers that I've seen is on the order of 200,000. 200,000 fascists march on Rome. And this essentially causes the, the current government to, to be the, the, prime, the, the prime minister to be ousted. And the king appoints Mussolini as prime minister. So Mussolini, Mussolini is now the prime minister. So this is a huge, this is a super rapid ascent, really based on people's unhappiness with the left-leaning governments, people's desire for a strong leader, Mussolini's uh, kind of charisma, his, you know, every picture you, you see of him, he has these kind of really stern looks, he has this kind of impression of a really strong figure. And not only did, did he become prime minister, but he's able to get dictatorial powers. The legislature actually gives him dictatorial powers for a year dictatorial dicta, dictatorial powers for one year. So you can't at this point call him the dictator. We'll see that that's going to come in a in a few years, but he's granted essentially absolute control. He can pass he can pass laws at will. And and it's an interesting question of history of why at this point the legislature was willing to give him dictatorial powers and why the king was uh, fine with this with this fairly uh, you know strong character being prime minister with dictatorial powers. And, uh, you know, my understanding is, and I'm curious to see what you guys say in the message boards, is that it really was around, you know, people were desire on one level, there, there was a desire, especially amongst the middle class and the elite, of having the strong leader, of maybe someone who could bring order and pride to the country. And then on top of that, he was backed up by these... He was backed up by the Black Shirts, this kind of paramilitary group that was dispersed throughout, throughout Italy that, that could intimidate his opponents. And so you can imagine some legislatures were actually keen to support a strong leader after many years of weak leadership. But on top of that, they, they probably felt intimidated into, into giving Mussolini these, these absolute powers.